Why would anyone buy a power station? <laughs> I get that comment a lot in my videos about extending power stations, and I thought today I would talk about why I think, one, power stations are gonna be around forever, and two, so's do-it-yourself power, and why I think power stations are right for some people, and do-it-yourself power is right for others, and maybe both. So let's talk about what they are. A power station like the Dabson 600L that I have here now, it's a fully self-contained unit. You buy this, take it out of the box, charge it up, and away you go. A unit like this one that has 700 and I believe it's 68 watt hours, so not quite 800 watt hours of power, can run quite a lot of stuff. It's not gonna run your coffee pot, and it wouldn't run a refrigerator for very long, but it'll run a CPAP, It'll run lights, it'll charge up your phone, it'll run your computer. In fact, tell you a secret, I lost the charger for my computer, I still can't find it. It's somewhere between here and my cabin and I haven't figured out where. And you know what I do now? I just plug it into this. I use a USB-C cable for 100 watts and I plug it straight into this little Dabson 600L and it keeps my computer running, charges up the computer battery and keeps my cell phone and everything else running while I'm at it. And it's easy to use, it's simple, it's a nice little package. So what is a power station? Maybe you're asking that question. Well, a power station is a battery, an inverter, a DC converter to convert from whatever the battery voltage is to the correct voltage for your USB and your 12 volt ports. And it has breakers, fuses, all that good stuff, as well as a charger to charge the battery and a solar port to charge from solar. So you've got pretty much everything that is an off-grid system in a little box. And they're fairly inexpensive today. I think this 600L runs still about $284. I'll drop a link down below. It's a great little unit. This is my go-to unit. I've got another one below here though that I'll show you. So let's take a look at that one. The next unit that I have here is the Opus Mega One. If you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen it before. I like to use it for a lot of testing. So what do we have here? Same thing, battery, inverter, DC converters, solar charger, utility port charger or 120 volt charger, USB ports, all that good stuff, breakers, fuses, you name it. This one has a 1024 watt hour battery, so not bad, one kilowatt, and a 2000 watt inverter. All in one package, easy to grab, take it with you. This one can run a fridge for about a day or so, and you can add four kilowatts of battery to it so that you could run your refrigerator for multiple days in an outage. It's a nice little unit. It's an all-in-one off-grid power system in a box. Inexpensive, easy to carry around, you don't have to do anything. Now, let's move over to do-it-yourself power. Let's not forget this, and, um, this, and I'm probably missing some things. So the first thing with do-it-yourself power is do it yourself. A lot of people are gonna buy power stations because they don't wanna do this. You gotta have a battery charger. So, I mean, you, you gotta have one of those in order to charge up your battery, which you gotta have a battery. You've gotta have an inverter. Now, you can buy any inverter you want. I bought this one, it's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter for 12 volt systems. Works great, I'm happy with it. Wasn't very expensive, so easy enough to do. You can choose your own, but you've also got to buy cables. Now, if you buy these inverters, they do come with cables. I bought bigger cables for my own reasons. You need a switch, an on off switch. You need a, a, a battery monitor, which I have down below here. Of course, you got to have the battery. Now, the battery I have here, and this is probably the beginning of why people do it yourself. That battery's four kilowatts. It's basically four times the size as the battery that's in the Opus Mega One and five times the size of the battery that's in the Dabson 600L. In fact, it's almost double the size of the battery that's in the Dabson DBS 2100 that I just reviewed and I used on my trip to Canada for two weeks as a backup system for my camper and we used it all the time. And the amazing thing is, I could just add three more of these batteries to give me eight times the power. 16 kilowatts, that's a lot of power. I'm gonna say this, on the small end, if you're only building about one or two kilowatts worth of backup power, 
And again, this is part of the reason people don't do this, I think, is because you have to actually know what you need in order to build that system. But in order to do that, it costs a little bit more. Do-it-yourself power stations tend to come into their own when you build bigger systems. I built a lead time all-in-one system this summer that has a 3,500 watt inverter and you can put huge amounts of power to it. You can hook up like something like 5,000 watts of solar or 4,400 watts of solar to it. Much, much bigger system. And yeah, that would cost a lot less than doing it in a power station. Considerably less. But if you're just building something like the Dabson 600L, I don't know that you could do it for $284. I don't think you could. Yeah, maybe. It'd be close. But then you'd have to carry this big bulky thing around. So that's, that's something that's important. Now, on do-it-yourself, you also have to have a charge controller. It doesn't have to be a big one like this old Morningstar I have, but this Morningstar has lasted so long that I'd probably want to get something like this because it'll never quit. And that's the advantage of do-it-yourself. Do-it-yourself, you can source each component separately so that you can research each thing. Maybe Morningstar makes one of the best charge controllers that exist. They do, by the way. So if you buy a, a Morningstar charge controller, it's going to last forever. This one is 15 years old, and I could go plug it in right now and make use of it. In fact, the only reason it's not in use is I was just testing another one that I've had in for oh, almost a year now, and it's doing well. So that, But that's the only reason I replaced this one. Let me put it back up here. Hopefully that's straight. So, you got to get a charger, cables, switches, monitors, batteries, fuses, all that kind of stuff. That's okay because doing that means you're going to have a bigger, more robust, more easily repairable system that can provide a lot more power over a much, much greater extended period. You're not going to be limited to just the components of the power station. And if one of the power station components breaks, I got two broken ones here, you may not be able to get those fixed very easily. But a system that you built yourself, if this inverter quits, well, guess what? You just go buy another inverter. So components wise, once you build your own, easy to fix. You want to expand the battery? No problem. Just get more batteries. I believe that power stations are here to stay because they are simple, fairly inexpensive, all in one packages that somebody who has no idea how solar works or how any kind of off grid power works, because that's really what they are, can go buy them, take that box home, open up the box, pull the unit out, charge it up and plug it in and plug stuff into it and use it right away. So for those that ask why anybody would do that, or more specifically, why anybody would try to like connect a battery to the solar port on one to expand the capacity, well, I think it's just because it's easy. It's simple, it's easy, it's convenient, and they work. They work well, and they work when you need them. So I think that's why power stations are here to stay, and that's why people buy them, and that's why people do things like add batteries so they can extend their runtime. So why do do-it-yourself solar? Well, I think once you get past the smaller size power stations, do-it-yourself solar is a lot less expensive. You can choose any component in the system that you want, so you can go out and source those components and say, well, this inverter has a great reputation, so maybe I'm going to use that. But this charger has a really good reputation, so I'm going to use that one. And boy, I like that Morningstar charge controller, so I'm going to grab one of those and I'm going to get these solar panels and so on. And so I think while power stations are here to stay, and I think there are lots of great reasons to buy them, especially say you're in an apartment and it's much easier or you're a renter, and it's a lot easier to transport something if you don't think you're going to stay there for years. Having a power station is kind of like having a generator that doesn't need gas. Building your own, yeah, you gotta have a little bit of know-how, but you can, you can save money and build much bigger, better systems. So there you have it, folks. That's my opinion anyway. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank all my members for being here. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And I'll drop another video right over here for you folks to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.